Time for PFT OT. It's the post PFT live show into which we cram all of the stuff that we couldn't fit into PFT live. What do they say? It's like putting 10 pounds of crap into a five pound bag. This is the extra five pound bag that we, but that's not the best metaphor. That's, it's not crap. Let's just, let me just say that. You go ahead. Uh, talk but, yourself out of making this a better no, open I can't. here. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a whirling derby uh, trying to talk my way <laughs> out of go. this. All right, let's start with Washington where they have a new quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. And Jay Gruden, the coach of the team, told reporters on Tuesday that this break coming up between offseason workouts and training camp, very important for Haskins because they're expecting him to do his homework, to learn the offense, to watch film, to get comfortable. And, you know, look, th this is part of the reality of being the quarterback. There is no break, right? You are locked in all the time. And if Dwayne Haskins wants to have a chance to win the starting job, and I think this is the message Rudin is sending to Haskins, you're going to bust your ass right. while you're on this break learning this offense, and you're going to prove to me when you get back that you have. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what he's saying. And also, you know, in, in a very careful way, also I think trying to say, like, hey, we got to continue to push and get better. Better, and you got to be better in the huddle and knowing some of the intricacies in the offense. Uh, these are some of the things we were, you know, we heard about Dwayne Haskins. Of course, this is not going to be a strong point for him. It's one year as a starter at Ohio State. You know, we heard a lot of talk in the pre draft process that, you know, he was a guy that looked like he was, you know, he's 21 years old and he acts 21 years old. So he's still maturing professionally and even as a man, he's just becoming a man. These guys are kids in a lot of ways, but it is an important time, Mike, because you don't want to just go home and go, oh, I'm just going to put my feet up and relax before we start football because you'll be in a world of crap, literally, when training camp starts that way. And, yeah, he's made some, made some improvements and, and some strides as far as knowing the offense. you got to take time, Dwayne Haskins, you know, whether it's 20, 30 minutes, an hour, a night, whatever it is, go back, look at your notes, look at the playbook, you know, Talk in the mirror as far as, you know, saying things in the huddle. Those are things I practice at times. I would go in the bathroom and talk a little bit just so I could spit it out so I didn't sound like an idiot calling a play in front of Keyshawn Johnson the next day or whatever it is. But uh, I think those are the things that Gruden's alluding to. But that's the ultimate litmus test, right? Whether a guy is going to rely upon his ability or whether he's going to dive into it and commit the way that we see the true franchise quarterbacks commit. There is no red shirt year. Right. There is no break-in period. There is, here's your playbook, here's the film, here's your, your tablet with all the stuff on it. Go and learn the offense and yeah. be ready to show us when you get here that we do. And I you can put yourself in the position of the coach. If if on the first couple of days of practice, it's obvious Dwayne Haskins hasn't mastered the play calls, hasn't mastered the formations, and has a long way to go from the standpoint of learning to the point where we have to spoon feed him. Yeah. That's going to knock him down in the estimation of where he is relative to the other candidates to be the starter. Definitely. Yeah, it's not going to give the coaching staff confidence to go, oh, this guy should be the starter. They're going to look at it and go, oh, I mean – you know, maybe he's just not ready for it yet because he didn't show that he wanted to do the little things to prepare to be ready to go. But yeah, you got to be all over the process. And you said it, Mike, as a franchise quarterback, you're the guy. There's there's really no days off. I mean, yeah, you don't have to go to the Redskins facility. I get that. But, you know, working out, correct diet, get ready for your run test, throw some footballs every day, and certainly go over, go over the mental gymnastics of the offense should still be a part of the routine for uh, a guy like Dwayne Haskins, you know, going into his rookie year through the month of July. You know, after Andrew Luck made it through all of the 2018 season unscathed, despite the concern regarding his shoulder and will he be able to play, now there's a calf injury that has kept him out of an extended stretch of the offseason program. Luck said that he has learned from what happened with his shoulder that you need to be conservative, that it creates too much anxiety when you try to force your way back. And anybody that's ever had a strained calf, it's like a strained hamstring. You just need to rest it. And it's smart for the Colts to shut him down. It's smart for Luck to shut himself down, let himself get healthy before training camp starts so it's not a lingering issue. Because what will happen is you feel that grab, and if you come back too soon, it grabs again and it never gets right. And the next thing you know, you have a potential serious injury. So Andrew Luck learned the hard way with a 2017 that was lost entirely to a shoulder injury. 
take the time to get healthy before you force your way back onto the field. That's right. Touchy injury, like you alluded to, it really is. Uh, you know, uh, you know, quarterback. You know, that is, it's one of those things. You do it once. Uh, it's very susceptible to coming up again and then nagging you all season long. And gosh, what a better time to talk about resting a calf injury two days after we just saw a guy, one of the best players in the NBA, rushed back from a calf injury and tear his Achilles tendon. And ultimately, that's what the Colts should be scared of is something like that. You know, oh, gosh, did we really need to see Andrew Luck push up in the pocket in June to know he's a good quarterback? Oh, then he, you know, tears his Achilles because we rushed him back for seven-on-seven drills in June. No, it's a smart decision here. He's been beat up a lot through his career. Uh, Andrew Luck will be ready to go once training camp goes around, and uh, I expect a big year from him. We assume that someone will be ready to go as the kicker for the Chicago Bears when the season begins, but the misadventures continue. They have three candidates right now, Eddie Pinheiro, Chris Blewett, what a name, and Elliot Fry, and all three missed 40-yard field goals during a minicamp practice, said Matt Nagy, whatever went through your mind went through my mind regarding <laughs> the performance of the kickers, and they're making this a bigger deal by having this revolving door, because think of the pressure that's going to be on whoever the kicker is week one. He's going to be the guy everybody's talking about. Can he make a kick? It's like an extra point is going to be a 50-yard field goal from a difficulty standpoint because of all that pressure, Chris. Yeah, it's – it's. I mean, I, I never talked about a kicker or field goal kicker so much as I did talking to the Chicago media last year. It's an unbelievable lightning rod subject. There's tremendous pressure, not only from the organization, but the fans. I mean, hey, we saw last year – Right, Cody Parkey went to Soldier Field. You know, the news station sent helicopters there to film them practicing field goals. So that just gives you a taste of how big uh, this issue has become. And of course, it is a big issue because you look at teams like the New England Patriots, who are on their second dynasty. You know, both dynasties they had clutch quarterback, uh, clutch kickers that can win them games. Guskowski, Vinatieri. It's a it's a, un or a, a not talked about enough position as far as winning those close football games. And you're right about the pressure thing. The good thing about the pressure thing is the guy who kind of arises from it and comes away from it, you're going to go, okay, I think he really can do this. He can handle it. I mean, he's been under a microscope, and everybody that's a Bears fan has been watching it, and, and he's come through. So there is that aspect of it too. You know, the Bears really do need to do something outside the box here. And on Twitter, I noticed yesterday our buddy Pat McAfee, who was a hell of a field goal kicker at West Virginia University, became a punter at the next level, always wanted to be the place kicker in Indy after Adam Vinatieri retired. It turned out McAfee retired first. <laughs> McAfee, there's a video of McAfee banging one. Oh, I bet he I can. You, and, and you want somebody who can deal with the pressure and just laugh it all off and welcome that kind of a spotlight? Mike, maybe they should give Mike. Wouldn't a, that be something if they gave Pat McAfee a call? Oh, I mean, that would just be gold for everything. I mean, it'd be gold for us. I mean, he'd be, you know, he's Pat McAfee. He's going to be silly. He's going to be a great, you know, sound bite when he does an interview. I mean, I would love to see that. Certainly. This is the other thing, Mike, that I mean, we got to talk about. I mean, did the Bears, were they holding out hope all offseason? Did they think they were going to get Robbie Gold back from the 49ers? Did they think that was going to shake out some way? Because it certainly doesn't seem like the 49ers are going to make anything happen there. They still may think they're going to. And Kyle Shanahan said earlier this week, all that matters to him is that Gold's there week one. I mean, a kicker doesn't need to be there no. for training camp. Kicker right. doesn't need to be there for the preseason. Kicker just needs to be there to kick when week one rolls around. And the question becomes, will Gold eventually sign that franchise tender, take that money that goes along with it, which is great money for a kicker, and show up and kick? Or is he dead set on getting out of San Francisco? And at some point, is there a possibility of a deal? But remember, July 15, the key deadline. That's the deadline for doing a long-term deal. So if he was going to be traded to the Bears, he'd have to sign that tender and be traded and sign the long-term deal before July 15 or the Bears wouldn't be interested. So I think if that's going to happen, it's going to happen by July 15. Um, but the Bears need to make something happen because the current option's not good enough, and I think the pressure is going to make it even more difficult. All right, plenty of pressure on the Falcons to get Julio Jones signed to a new contract. Jones said he showed up for mandatory minicamp. He said that owner Arthur Blank told him back in February a deal will happen. He's a man of his word, and a deal's going to happen. And that's so simplistic, Chris, because the deal only happens if the two sides agree on what the deal's going to be. If it was that easy, Julio Jones would have had a new deal 
last year. The problem is, at age 30, he wants more than what the Falcons want to pay him. Can they find a way to make the two circles on the Venn diagram come together? Yeah, well, first off, the first thing I thought of, Mike, was what a great negotiating tactic right there, first off. Just to publicly put the pressure on, you're a good guy, his word is bond, the owner told me this already. I mean, that right there is going to get people on his side right away. So that was a, a great comment by him. I don't know if he did it deliberately or not you know second thing is of course he deserves more money I mean we've talked about this so much even last year when Matt Ryan got you know his new deal you know Matt Ryan's not worth two Julio Jones I know that much at the very base it's 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 actually more than two Julio Jones and some of the receivers in football right now that are making more money than Julio Jones yeah it just shouldn't be that way I don't know what other way to say it you know I'm uh, Julio Jones I don't care where you have him I don't think anybody in their right mind wouldn't say he's one of the three best receivers in football you might have him one you might have him two you might have him three but I don't think anybody wouldn't have him outside the top three and yeah there's guys in front of him whether it's Devon Adams, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, Adam Thielen, Brandon Cooks. None of those names deserve to make more money than Julio Jones, even at the age of 30. Now, some of the other guys, okay, I can justify Antonio and Odell making more money than him. Mike Evans, all right. Yeah, they're in the class of player he is. But uh, those other guys I mentioned, not. Yeah, and the question becomes, can they work this out? Can they get this this deal at a point where both sides agree that this is the right amount, this is the right number, this is the right guarantee, signing bonus, everything that goes along with it. And you're right. I believe it's the Matt Ryan contract. Once he gets to $30 million a year, Julio Jones says, what the hell? Right. Uh, how, 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 wait a minute. There, there, there's something wrong here. There's too much being given to one guy when I'm one of the reasons why this guy's numbers are as good as they are. Without me, he's not going to be anywhere close to being a $30 million quarterback. At least that's what has to be going on in the mind of a Julio Jones, and we'll see if the Falcons can work this out. Yeah. All right, we've been waiting to see who the team for hard knocks will be this year. No one wanted to do it, and I'd love to know what the story is as to how the league finally convinced the Raiders to willingly do it. But, Chris, how do you think your old coach, John Gruden, is going to handle an assignment that he seemed to not want? He didn't want his team, his training camp, to be invaded by NFL Films camera crews. How's he going to handle it going forward? Well, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be can't miss TV. Uh, I, this is one year where, you know, I watch Hard Knocks every year, but I'm not saying I include in, you know, the night it's released every week, right? Uh, This is a year I will be because I've been around John Gruden. He's going to put on a show. First of all, when when the cameras are not there, he puts on a show. That's just the way he is. He's an animated personality. He's going to talk crap and, you know, say funny things and all that. Uh, You know, I think he'll play to the cameras for the most part. He'll have a chunk of time, maybe 10 minutes every day, where he wants to, you know, mother F HBO and all the cameramen around him. And they might lead to some great sound bites where he says a lot of four-letter words about guys all up in his crap when he's trying to prepare a game plan or something like that, which is also going to be awesome, let alone the personalities around them. So I'm excited for it, Mike. Uh, I mean, I think he is made for this show, whether he likes it or not. Yeah, you know, I I think that that uh, it, it just that that hesitation, and he'll know how to play to the cameras. Look, one thing that I noticed about him the moment he came back to coaching, how much better he was, how much more polished he was after nine years of TV. Right. So he's going to know what to do. I just think that in his mind, we got enough to worry about. We're playing games in three different yeah, countries this right. year. We're in the process of moving. We got a two month window where we don't have a home game. Yeah. I don't want to have worrying about the camera because I think he will be keenly aware of it. He will change the way he acts and that's going to take attention away from his primary job, which is to get his football team ready. I I think he'll be good, but it's going to piss him off that he's got to be worried about playing to the camera instead of worrying about taking care of business. I, 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 that's correct, Mike. And you're right. They got a lot on their plate, the Oakland Raiders. It's a big year for that football team. We know the move is looming, all of that. Yes, the schedule is hard. You mentioned that. Uh, and, and if I'm I'm also, if I'm John Gruden, I'm a little scared of the personalities on my team, too. I mean, yeah, they got a, a, a you know, like Mike Mayock said, it's not, you know, it's not a bunch of choir boys boys out there it's certainly not and they got a few players that are not going to be afraid to say things they don't care if the cameras and the mics are around either way and I would be more worried about you know the show trying to make 
some, you know, uh, what do I want to say? Obstacle for the team, you know, maybe pinning one player against another player or the coaches versus a player. Those are the things I would worry about the most as a coach. I don't want any false narratives, I guess, is what I would say out there. No, I agree with you completely, and and it's just more on his plate. It's more on the team's plate to avoid a scene ending up in the show that that would be as awkward as the Hugh Jackson Todd Haley argument from last year. There's got to be a lot of concern here, and I just want to know what kind of agreement was reached. Whether the Raiders get consideration for something they want unrelated to Hard Knocks, or it's made abundantly clear that they will have the power. To, to remove anything they want. The John Gruden and Mike Mayock are going to watch it independently two days before it goes to air, and they're going to be able to say, this goes, this goes, this goes, this goes. We don't want it in there. We don't want the team to be presented in any light other than the most possible a positive and favorable way that they can. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I don't know how that works. I, I would actually be really interested. I mean, obviously there's some filter here because you, 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 HBO can't be going in there and, you know, letting up the signals, you know, whether it might be the signals for certain routes or audibles or things like that. So there's got to be some gauge, but yeah, I wonder how far that really goes to where, I would I would only agree to do it if yeah. I have absolute control over what comes out and anything that would be strategic or anything that would be awkward or anything that would be that would that would paint the team in any remote way in a negative light. I would want to be able to say it's out find something else. You got all these cameras, you got all that footage, find something else to put in for that 30 seconds. And I think Gruden I I think before Gruden would ever agree to be cooperative and happy and anything other than a complete and total jerk to the film crews, I think he would want that assurance. I know I would want that assurance. Yeah, Otherwise, the, but, I don't want you around. But do they have that, you know, kind of like or is this the NFL just says no, this is you got it and here's the no, rules no. we've already made. How do you know that's where I don't I don't know how it there's works. always been a sense that the team has control over what ultimately okay. ends up being broadcast Brian Billick the coach of the Ravens the first team that was the subject of hard knocks 18 years ago has said that I think what happens though is sometimes the producers will talk the teams into doing things that hey, this is a great moment look we got to be true to the show we got to show people how it really is I have you know like last year with the Hugh Jackson Todd Haley thing my guess is they convinced somebody in Cleveland this was actually good to let this real human moment be broadcast, even though it made Jackson and Haley look bad and they eventually got fired. So I think if, if I'm Gruden, I want to be damn sure. And, and think about it. Gruden and Mayock, both experienced and skilled yeah. media professionals. Right. They're going to want to be damn sure that there's nothing in there that can be used against the Raiders. All right, that's it for today's PFT OT. Chris, we'll have you back tomorrow. Another four-day work week for you. We get you Thursday, Friday. I think we'll have Big Cat. I think the Big Cat's triumphant return after almost a month away from About us. About time we'll do he did some P work. PFT Live and PFT OT tomorrow. Chris, have a great day. Everybody out there, enjoy your Wednesday. Check us out at ProFootballTalk.com. We'll see you tomorrow. See you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.